Hello, this is the Toyota Hilux 4x4 camper. Let me show you how this vehicle operates, so let's begin. Let's start off in the front driver's side. Let's open the door. And let me show you something very important here in Iceland before you start driving. The headlights, which are located on the left side of the steering wheel, they must be on all the time while you're driving here in Iceland. It's the law. To turn the headlights on, we grab this control here at the end and we rotate it up and we have it on the always on headlight icon, which is on the top here. To turn them off, we bring down the control wheel back down to auto and that turns them off. When you turn off the car and you want to leave and go somewhere else, make sure to take off the keys from the ignition and bring back the lever to auto, turns it off. It's important to know that having the headlights on all the time is the law here in Iceland, so don't forget. Also, when you have the headlights on while you're driving, the vehicle has a secondary battery in the back that fuels the items in the back. You need to have the headlights on to charge that battery. So keep the headlights on, one, because it's the law, and two, so you have the battery in the back charging. Another important thing to remember is to turn the headlights off when you turn the vehicle off you might run out of battery, so be careful. In the front of the vehicle, between the driver and the passenger seat, the side uh, compartment, when you lift it up, you have a 230 volt connection. It's a little cap you lift up. So if you have items that you need to plug directly to the outlet, you have a 230 volt connection here. This 230 volt outlet only works when the vehicle is turned on, when it's running. When it's off, this won't work. The Toyota Hilux has the 4x4 performance and to activate this option it is located at the bottom of the right side of the steering wheel we have this lever to switch from two wheel high to four wheel high we could just switch that right over if we want to switch it to four wheel low we need to stop the car we put it in neutral and then switch it to four low in the case you want to switch it back to four wheel high, you need to stop the car again, put it in neutral, switch it to four high, and you're back. When you're crossing the river, make sure to have the four by four option in four wheel low. Use your best judgment. If you damage the engine while crossing the river, it is not covered by the insurance. Fuel type, the Toyota Hilux runs on diesel fuel, so that's the black pump at the gas station. To open up the, the gas door, which is located here on the driver's side back, there's a lever right under the steer, left steering wheel. You pull that up and it unlocks the fuel door. We open it and then we see the black cap, which means diesel, which means black handle at the gas station. You twist it. To the left, all the way, pull out the cap, fill in diesel gas, black pump. Electricity. We have the 230 volt cable connection that's located on the back of the vehicle right here by this, this compartment. We lift up the, the cover and we have the outlet and then we provide a very long cable that is going to connect into this outlet. So we lift the, the cover up, we keep the cover inside. We connect the pins, we push in, and now it's locked. This cable will run into the campsite electricity box. Once that's connected, you'll have electricity in the vehicle. When you get to the campsite, make sure you go into the office, you activate the electricity, and you pay. And then once you have that, everything should be working. In the case you get there off hours, late, the electricity might not work. So you might plug and think there's electricity, and it won't work. Also, when you're connected to the electricity box at the campsite, you have outlets inside the camper. And once those outlets are working, the battery as well in the back of the car will be charging as well. When you're done and you want to take the 230 cable out, there's a, a push down lock right on the left side. We push that down, we push back, and we take out the cable. This compartment in the back uh, rear of the vehicle has two things. So let's lift it up and let me show you. On the right, we have the gas tank. This fuels the stove inside the vehicle. The key for the gas is up here. 
So to open up the gas, you rotate to the left, the gas comes out, fuels the stove. Make sure to close it while you're driving. To close it, you rotate to the right. Make sure to close that key, the gas key. On the left side, we have a water tank that fuels the uh, sink inside. This is a 10 liter water tank. If you need to refill it, just remove the cap. You go to the left, rotate to the left, remove the cap, take it off, take out the water tank, campsite, refill it. Now let me show you how to uh, open up the roof portion of the back of the camper uh, at the, in the Toyota Hilux. And in order to do this, we need to unlock, we have four locks we need to unlock, which are located on the front and the back of the vehicle. Let's unlock the first one. In order to do this, we need to lift this lever at the bottom up. We push it all the way up and we release the hook. One, hook number two. Again, we lift the uh, lock up, all the way up. We release the lock, the hook. Lock number three, lever up, all the way up. And we take the hook. And number four. And push out. With the car keys, you're gonna have the lock key for the back door. This is how you enter into the, camp, into the camper section. To unlock it, we get this silver key, put it in the lock, rotate to the right. You're gonna feel it unlock, twist the door handle, opens the door. Inside you're gonna see a step stool. You can take this out, put it on the floor. Under the door, there's a step ladder. To take it out, there's a little hook here. We have to pull out, rotate it out, and then we can pull the step ladder down. And now we can walk into the camper section. If you want to lock this door when you're inside, just lift this lever up. So we just unlocked the roof so we can bring it up. In order to bring the roof upwards, we need to have this lever up. And then this button here that says compressor, we need to switch it on, down. You're going to hear it and slowly the roof will start pushing upwards. Once you see the two safety holes, which the pins are going to go into, that's when you want to turn the motor off. Before you do anything else, this is a very important thing. Make sure to put the safety pins on the roof and you put them through the two holes here. And that will protect you just in case the roof slicey comes down. In the control panel, you have the electricity uh, button. Once you switch that on, it controls the USB connections right over here, the fridge, which is underneath. So here's the door and you have the refrigerator and freezer. The sink, the running water, you have the nozzle and then the control wheel, turn it on. And also the ceiling lights here in the camper. So you can see there's one up there. To turn on the gas stove, we include a hand lighter that you will need to ignite the stove. So we will turn the knob to release the gas. And then with the lighter, we ignite. Same applies for the smaller stove. We let the gas out and then we ignite. To turn on the heating system, the internal heating system in here into the, in the camper, we have the control wheel. Right now it's in the off position. To turn it on, we rotate it to the right. You're gonna see a little green light there in the arrow. And then we can control the heat by rotating it all the way to the right. That's the hottest uh, point. To turn it off, we can go back all the way back to the left. Just a reminder, if you wanna keep the heating running all night, we recommend you leave the car running for at least 10 minutes before you turn the vehicle off. So then you can appreciate the heating overnight. The heating system comes out from the bottom section here on the seating area, right over here. In the compartment to the right, when you enter the camper section, there's a little door, we can unlock it. And on top you have a heater. This is a secondary heater that you can plug into the 230 volt. This only works when the car is hooked up to the 230 volt connection at the campsite. The bottom, there's the bag where the cable for the 230 uh, volt connection is. Up here, you also have uh, cleaning devices. So if you have some dirt and rocks, you can clean, clean that off. 
Also, you have a fire extinguisher just in case, right in here. There's two compartments inside here. We push it in to unlock. You have pillows and bed sheets. And then on the other one on the other side, we push to unlock and we have sleeping bags. Underneath the table, there's an outlet. This is the outlet that can connect into a 230 volt connection. This outlet only works when you're connected to the campsite. So the cable we hooked up in the back, once that's connected into the campsite, this outlet works. Down here underneath the table, we lift up this compartment and these are the two extra batteries for the back. These batteries charge when the car is running. You also have to have the headlights on and these batteries will start recharging while you drive. In the package, we also include uh, cooking accessories. So we have an extra portable gas griddle. To turn this on, first this uh, dial needs to be an on off. So make sure it's on off. And then unlock and lock, you need to lock it. So it locks the propane and opens up the gas. And then you have to rotate to on, which is down here, gives it a little bag, bit, a bit of gas and then ignites and it's on. You can see, and then you can control it maximum and minimum. To turn it off, you rotate back to off and then always make sure that the lever is on, on lock and now it can't release any uh, gas. Flip this back over so it fits in the box, close it and lock it. And in the gray bin, we have the dishes, cups, pots and pans, forks and knives. This is how to set the second bed. We need to take the table out of the hook. Place this down. We take the tube out, put it on the floor. Now we need to take out the pillows, the, the seating pillows. We take them out, put them on the, on the primary bed. These two. Now we lift the cushion upwards and take it out. And then inside this compartment, we have the support beams. Now we're gonna take the beams out. This is gonna be the support system for the bed right here. So we're gonna put one here, two in the middle. And then this beam, make sure to check the beam. This has a angular hook to it. That goes where the angular hook goes here. So we place that. Okay. And now we're going to put the pillows back into place and this is going to form the bed. Make sure all the beams are even, the middle one and the ones from the outside. We can now add back the cushions. So we're going to start off with the soft mid-size cushions and put them at the far end by the window. One, two. Then we grab the thinner cushions and put them next to those. One, two, and then finally we grab the big cushions with the hard back and put those in the middle. So that's one, two, and now we have a bed for two. When you're done, you wake up, you wanna put this back into the table seating position. We bring back the cushions, big cushions for out first, put them back on the top. And now we have to bring back the beams into the compartment. Put those there, grab the third one. And now we have to put back the pillows. So grab the big cushions, make sure you align the angle here with the cushion, with the seat, put these back here. Medium the pillows go here, small one. Medium, small one, you got your seat. Now we have to return the table back up, grab the tube, put it back, 
lift the table, hook it to the tube, and you're back. To bring down the roof, when you're done, we want to bring the, sta the safety pins out. We want to take them out of the compressor, the second one here, out, and now we go back to the control panel. We go back to the compressor area here. We have this lever. We have to bring this down. We have to release the pressure. So we slowly bring the lever down. You're gonna hear the air come out. And then slowly, the roof will start coming down. When you bring down the roof or while you're bringing down the roof, make sure these, the fabric material from the sides of the roof are inside the vehicle. So some of the fabric might be sticking out. So always make sure to fully completely so you can lock the roof. This material is inside here into the camper area. Once we bring down the roof, it's completely lowered. This lever needs to come back up. Now we close the door. Then we need to, don't forget to lift the step ladder. You lift it up, you push it in, and don't forget about the hook. Push it out, lift it, let go, and it locks. Before you drive, make sure you lock the roof. Grab the four locks, hook them back into the lock position, and lock them. Two, three, four. I hope this video helped you. Now enjoy your time in Iceland.